Good morning, Saints. It's about 2 a.m. on March 13th. I uh, decided to get up and release something the Lord was showing to me that he began showing me about a week ago. But I wanted to hold it for a while um, and be sensitive to how I released it. So, um, But feel like I'm supposed to release that now. So... I want to talk just a minute um, in regards to the veils, the two veils. Um, there are two veils and they are shame and reproach. The first veil of shame is removed As Israel passed through the Red Sea, that symbolized the mercy of Christ and the removing of shame through his blood. As it talks about in Micah, that our sins or our iniquities he cast into the sea. So his mercy reveals or removes the veil of shame and as they passed through the river Jordan and into the promised land, they were circumcised in Gilgal. And there the reproach was removed. As they passed through the river and to Gilgal. As the Lord says, he has founded it upon the seas and established upon the floods or the rivers, the earth. And so I'll just, I'll just begin there, you know. Um, what happened in Gilgal, it says the reproach was rolled away in the circumcision. And so what, what happened there? What does that mean? What does that fully mean? In circumcision, the foreskin, the rolling away is the rolling back of the foreskin. And so this is speaking of a truth here. And what is revealed when you roll back the foreskin? When the foreskin is removed, it reveals the head. The head of the penis and we're not talking about sex here. We're talking about the head who is Christ. That's why I was sensitive on, on when I released this and how it's released. So, um, of course, the occult, uh, the enemy, the devil has perverted this and turned this truth into sex about sex and there we have the phallic symbol and the worship of sex and the occult um, but the truth is this circumcision the rolling away of the foreskin reveals see the penis what is the what the occult worships as the source of procreation and of course, Christ is the head of all creation. See, the enemy perverts that truth, doesn't he? Of course. Christ is the head of all creation. And he is the head or the father of the new creation. The new creation in himself. 
as Isaiah chapter 9, 6 says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government is upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Everlasting Father. He is the Father of the new creation in Christ Jesus. As it says in um, Isaiah chapter 8, isn't it, where he says, Behold, I and the children which God has given me, this new creation in Christ Jesus. And so in Gilgal, as they pro passed into the promised land, um, first in passing through the Red Sea, Israel coming Israel coming out of Egypt, coming out of the world, figuratively out of the world mind, first the shame is removed, and then in passing through the Jordan and heading to Gilgal where they were circumcised, the reproach was removed. The two veils, that they could come into the promised land, <laughs> which is the Father's house. They could enter into the goodness of the Lord, as it says in, in um, Judges chapter 18, 10, in regards to the promised land, it is the, the large land, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. This promised land, of course, in the spiritual is the Father's house. To enter into the Father's house, you have to become the Son. You have to enter into your full identity of sonship. And this is what it's all about in this circumcision, the foreskin being rolled back and removed and revealing the head of this new creation who is Christ. We are his seed the seed of Christ. And of course, Abraham was, this was uh, really instituted in the covenant with Abraham. And of course, Paul speaks about this, that this seed of Abraham was Christ. <clears throat> and this was a covenant to Abraham to that Christ would be at the forefront and the revealing of Christ was the circumcision. See, we are the circumcision, as it says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. See, it is Christ Jesus that is revealed in this circumcision and have no confidence in the flesh. This is coming into this new creation, coming out of the flesh, coming out of Egypt, coming out of the world mind, and entering in this new creation in Christ Jesus, where Christ is the head of this new creation. And of course, Israel was called again in Exodus chapter 4.22, the father called Israel, my son, my firstborn. Because Israel was to come into the revelation. Israel in its, in its destiny is to ascend to the throne. And that happens through sonship. That happens by entering into the Son, Christ Jesus, entering in the firstborn from the dead, who is Christ. And of course, we were grafted into Israel and we are his sons, the firstborn from the dead. As we were joined to Christ, we were taken to the grave. The old man was taken to the grave and we were raised in newness of life, the firstborn from the dead, joined to him. And as uh, Hebrews chapter 12, 22 says, you are come to Zion
to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn written in heaven. And then he says, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See, not only did the blood, what does the blood of sprinkling speak? Well, first it speaks, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do in the remission of our sins, the remission of our iniquities in, in that mercy. But it also speaks, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. As we become the church of the firstborn, we enter into our sonship. I'm going to take you a moment here to uh, Psalm chapter 16. In Psalm cha chapter 16, a psalm of David. Um, David says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. And of course, we know throughout David's writings what he's talking about in preserving him is preserve me by mercy and truth. This is the blood and body of Christ. Um, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. And then it says, For thou hast said unto the Lord, or unto Yahweh, thou my Lord, speaking of Christ, speaking to the Father, my goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is all my delight. Wow, this is this is so loaded, this, this ch chapter, but... Um, my goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is all my delight. Okay, this goodness is speaking of Christ, the goodness of the Father's house, and, and Christ bringing us into that goodness of the promised land, into the Father's house. And the only way we can enter into the Father's house is to become the Son, because as Christ said in John chapter 8, the son, uh, the, the servant does not abide. Oh, there's so much more there I want to go into, but uh, the servant doesn't abide in the house forever. The son abides in the house forever. And to, so to receive of this goodness, to receive of all these spiritual blessings in heavenly places, we must come in to the revelation of sonship. And here in Psalm 16, David had, is entering into that. It, it's it's a, an expression of that. And um, into the goodness of the Father's house through Christ. And Jesus says, My goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is my all my delight. Now this word delight in the Hebrew, it's the same word, um, translated um, well we'll just go there for a second it's it's in Isaiah chapter 53 it says he poured out his soul unto uh, let's see I don't have my Bible in front of me let me um, Isaiah 53 where it says It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when he made his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. The pleasure. That word pleasure is that same word translated from the Hebrew as the word um delight there in Psalm 16. The excellent in whom all is my delight is speaking of the same people as the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And who are those pleasure of the Lord that shall prosper in his hand? 
those are, are his sons that he puts his hand upon and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, the pleasure of the Lord. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. She, he shall see his seed. Behold, I and the children which God has given me. He is the father of the new creation. The sons, they are those that he places his hand upon and says, This is my beloved son. Those are the pleasure of the pleasure of his hand. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So this is the same word as Psalm 16 where it says, um, My goodness is to the saints. See, the goodness of the Father's house, the way we enter it into it is through sonship. The goodness, my goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is all my delight my pleasure now listen to this where David says their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another their drink offerings of blood will I not offer nor take their names into my lips the Lord is my inheritance and my cup thou maintainest my lot the lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places Yea, I have a goodly heritage. The heritage of the Lord, he's speaking of the goodness of the Father's house. Surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Where all the Father's goodness is, this large land, this place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth, because we receive in that place all the goodness of the Lord. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage, the goodness of the Father's house. And then David goes on to say, um, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night season. And then he says, I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Now, if the Lord is at your right hand, if he were to place his hand upon your head, which hand would that be? If he's at your right hand, he places his left hand upon your head. And he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I believe this is what it is speaking here. When David said he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I am standing upon this rock of the revelation of who I am. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. As it says in Psalm 139, he laid his hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Where can I go from his spirit? Where can I flee from his presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there, the height of Christ's love. If I make my bed in hell, he is there, the depth. If I take up the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there his hand. He's standing right next to me at my right hand. Even there his hand shall lead me. His right hand shall hold me. His hand of truth. If I, there's the the length of his love. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me. What is that darkness? That darkness of the old man, the lie. 
what is the light? It's the light of Christ, the revelation of Christ coming into our identity. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even night shall be light about me. Yea, darkness hideth not from thee, for night shines as day, for darkness and light are both alike unto thee, for you have possessed my reins, the seat of my soul. This light of Christ invading <laughs> all darkness, and, and where there is light, there is no darkness, and expelling all this the lies and unbelief, the lie of the old man. And so these two veils, shame and reproach, both of these veils must be removed. coming out of the shame and coming out of the reproach. See, reproach. See, there is the blood of Christ that removes the sin, the transgression, the iniquity, but there is the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things and it's saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. the church of the firstborn. We are come to Zion, the church of the firstborn, and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things. To the church of the firstborn, the firstborn from the dead. See, being the firstborn from the dead is saying, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my the pleasure of his hand. And so we are the circumcision. And what is revealed in the circumcision of our heart? That Christ is head. That he is all there is in this new creation. And we are one with him. We are his sons. Christ who said that before Abraham was, I am. And then as, as Hebrews chapter 13 says, let us therefore go forth unto him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. See, what was he reproached for? What was covered over? And, and what they were speaking, the lie that they were speaking and the unbelief, they did not believe that he was the head of all, that he was the I am. When that whole discussion came about, we are Abraham's seed, he says, before Abraham was, I am. I am the son. I and my father are one. I am the head of the new creation. Let us go forth unto him, bearing his reproach. I am the son. The world tries to silence, the world mind tries to silence that, to cover it over. Let us therefore go forth unto him. I am your son. 
I am your son in whom you are well pleased. Bearing his reproach, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. By him, therefore, through him, through Christ, therefore, let us offer unto God the sacrifice of praise continually. That is the fruit of our lips, confessing to his name. His name, I am. I am the Son. By him, through that revelation that he is my identity, by him, through him, let us let the praise, my praise shall be of thee. Out of the identity that this is who I am. This is the accept acceptable sacrifice. The only acceptable sacrifice to the Father is his Son, Jesus Christ. And the acceptable sacrifice from us is coming into our identity in sonship. I am the Son. So, Holy Spirit, I thank you for removing the reproach from our hearts to where the head Christ is revealed in us, our true identity, and that the lie of the reproach is rolled away, and the Son, Christ, is revealed. Amen. May you be blessed with all spiritual blessings.